Thank you. Hello, hello. Let's see what we've got here. Eee. This is what we're going to be working with tonight. <laughs> Hi, welcome to the Tuesday night live stream. If you're here, uh-oh, hang on. I need my phone. Wait. Okay. <laughs> that was our intermission. All right. Hi, I am Michelle from Unicorn and Centaur, and we are doing the Tuesday night live stream now. And tonight is a sewing machine tutorial. Sewing Machines 101. Hang on, let me get into the chat and see who's here so I can say hi. Um, a lot of y'all, I know uh, quite a few of my subscribers are already very crafty and creative and you guys already know. Uh oh, hang on. Oh, hey, Zadel's here and Taylor. Uh oh, hang on. Give me my crap, mm, give me my comments back. I saw Marvel and I saw, let me get to the chat. There we are. I saw Marvel, made a big weighted blanket with a sewing machine yesterday. Yes, that counts. <laughs> Queen flower, yes. I couldn't find, I had a St. Patrick's Day one and with a little hat and now I can't find it and I'm mad about it. I'm feeling kind of salty about that. But um, there have been plenty of times on the crafting live stream where um, we've talked about sewing things and making stuff and some of the people in the chat are like, oh, I don't know how to use a sewing machine. Um, I also hear people uh, saying um, in our Facebook group and on my personal Facebook how, oh, I don't know how you do all that stuff. It's, I have a machine and I've never learned how to use it or it's very frustrating. So today in the next hour, we're going to sort of go through a tutorial on the basics of how the sewing machine works. Um, if you are already very experienced with sewing machines, feel free to chime in with the chat. Um, I don't know everything about everything, despite what I act like a lot of times. I like to act like I know everything, but I really don't. Um, hang on. I need to get started on our burping. So, oh, Taylor, got your first sewing machine yesterday. It runs so much better than the one my mom lets me use. Yeah. I nailed second shoe on one foot and did a lot better. Oh, cool. I'm so glad that Farrier School is going well. I love when you uh, post the pictures in the extra equestrians group. Um, and I love it last week when we had our job chat. Um, Farrier is like one of the best jobs you can have with horses. So today we'll go over a few things, how to thread the machine, um, how like all the parts of it work. I'm not going to get too technical and too like advanced, but there are just certain things I feel like people should know. Um, I'm also going to go over a little bit on how to read patterns and a little bit of important vocabulary. If you get to where you like sewing and you do it often and you like to make things for yourself, um, knowing how to read a pattern can be extremely valuable. It's a good place to start. Um, it'll give you, uh, you'll learn different techniques there. And um, one of the cool things is I taught myself how to sew a little bit and then I kind of learned how. Um, I got a job in a costume shop in college. I worked um, at uh, Midwestern State University in Wichita Falls, Texas, and I lied to get a job. I told the boss that I, I went on the interview and I told her that I already knew everything about sewing. <laughs> and then when we started like to do things, she'd have me do something and I'd be like, oh, this machine's threaded a little bit differently than the one I'm used to. Can you show me how to do it? And then I had to make sure I like remembered everything that she said. And um, she told me later she knew I was lying, but I learned pretty quickly, so she didn't care. I needed that job. <laughs> so um, you'll learn very valuable things. I had that, like I had someone helping me learn along the way, but nowadays you guys have YouTube and you have Google. And honestly, if you come up on something in a pattern that you don't understand, you can probably Google what it means. You can also message me either on Facebook or Instagram or here on YouTube. All right, set. Ooh, mom bought a big fancy one with a whole lot of stitch patterns. Nice. Yeah, actually to, to work, here's our first thing uh, we'll talk about. The only, you only really need two stitches to make just about anything. Excuse me, even buttonholes. Uh, but a straight stitch and a zigzag stitch, and that's about it. There's other fancy stitches. Mine um, has a whole bunch of like fancy stitches, and I've tried them out before on pieces of fabric. Um, but I just, the ones that I use the most are the wide zigzag stitch and then a straight stitch. So let's talk about it. 
Ooh, you're on a waiting list for vaulting lessons. That is awesome. Okay, I'm gonna turn it on. <gasps> ah! So um, we have the threads in the sewing machine. Let me pull you guys a little bit closer and let me see if we can see the mechanics of it all. I may have to like move this down a little bit. I don't know. So, okay, here's where our thread uh, feeds through and there are all these different uh, places where it goes around. Most modern machines have arrows that show you um, which way the thread goes and all of it and how it all gets threaded through. If you skip one of the little things, you're gonna have problems. As a matter of fact, for troubleshooting, it, the very first thing you're gonna check is do I have the machine threaded correctly? So let me see if I can actually pull you guys in even closer. And we'll talk about the parts of the sewing machine. This right here is your stitch length. And um, depending on what kind of machine you have, it may be uh, somewhere else. Um, there's the tension of the stitches and then there's the stitch length. So um, the wider you go, you can get like a really long stitch and those are not as stable. You use those for basting, which means that you may wanna take the seam out. If you wanna take, if you want the seam to last forever and ever, then you use a smaller stitch length stitch length because those are harder to rip out and harder to pull apart. So the wide stitches are for um, sort of like practice or um, when you just want to do something, it, you'll have instructions in the pattern. They'll be like based together and you're like, oh, okay. Um, this is the tension. Um, sometimes uh, you'll find that when you look back at your seams, it looks loose or it looks too tight and it's bunching up the fabric. Here's where you adjust that. Um, so there's the tension of tension and stitch length. And those are two things that you can fudge with if you are having problems. Um, so let me see. Hand stitching is, fun. you know, what? I find hand stitching very like relaxing. I enjoy it. I like putting on something to watch on YouTube or whatever, and then hand stitching things, but it does take forever. Uh, yes. Zadel, if you like hand stitching things, you're the kind of guy that I feel like probably should know how to use a sewing machine. You're very creative and you're very crafty. And it's not like you're going to be like little Miss Susie homemaker and be like making your own house dresses or anything. But um, it really is a valuable skill to have. And I feel like as creative as you are, it's um, a skill that would serve you. Um, so I put my little thread up on top here. Now this right here is the top thread. This is the top thread of your stitch. The bottom thread of your stitch on, comes from in here. This right here gives you some room to, this is like where you feed the fabric through. For things like sleeves or working in really small areas, you can take this off and then you've got a smaller area to work with under here. And this usually has like an area to store stuff in. So we'll take that apart for now because this is how you get to your bobbin. So you open up your little machine here and inside here is the little mechanism that work, that does the bottom part of the stitch. And this is what it looks like. The whole thing comes out. So this is what you put your bobbin in. And then this is a bobbin. You thread them up here. I don't know if I even have an empty one to show you guys. Hang on. Because mm, you um, thread your bobbin up here on your machine. And there, hopefully your machine comes with instructions so you can look at how exactly it goes in. Because if you put the bobbin in the wrong way, um, it's you're going to have a bad time. So you put your little bobbin in here. I'm going to pull that out again. There's a little notch right here. And that's what the thread goes down in. Let me see if I can show. So hang on, which way does it go? So you're doing it to where when you pull the thread, it's going counterclockwise. So you're gonna put it in here, and then you take the thread. Where's the outside is? So you take the thread and feed it down into the little thing here, and then under that. So it's actually coming out through. Can you guys see that? What's coming out through the side? It's not coming out the top. It comes out the side of the bobbin. Now you, to put it in, there's a little piece of it that you can just 
pop it back in there. And you want to pop it back in there with this po the pointy thing up on top. So I've got it holding it in my hand. And then I pop it back in there. So now you've got the thread hanging out like this of your bobbin. Let me redo my thing here. So I'm threading my machine. It's pretty much an up and down, up and down, up and down kind of thing. I need my scissors, don't I? Yes, I do. So you have to have the bobbin inserted correctly, and you also have to have um, your machine threaded correctly in order to have a good stitch. And if you don't have, this part is where most people get frustrated and quit. Most people are like, okay, done with this stupid thing. I can't stand it anymore. And all I can say is this is a learning curve that if you can get past your gold, you guys. Okay, my grandmother showed me how to use the antique sewing machine. I have one of those. I don't have a belt for it, but I do have one of those. Drawing a centaur right now, work in progress on Instagram. Oh, I haven't seen those. Oh, and Grinios is here. So hello, hello, hello. All right, so I am actually going, I've got it threaded. We'll go back over how to thread it. But I just wanted to show you that. I guess I should do that first, shouldn't I? Let's show you how to thread it. I'm going to bring this in even closer. I don't know if I can because, like, my legs are in the way. Okay. Can you see the little arrows that are on the sewing machine? There's an arrow here. There's one here. So there's little arrows here and here all over. And you're going to follow all these arrows. And that's, it's not the exact same on every machine. So um, if you can't find uh, the exact way to do, if you can't figure out the exact way to do your machine, Google your model online and they'll probably have a PDF of it. So the first one is this right here. Now, if I was going to load my bobbin, if I wanted to wind up a bobbin, I'd wrap it around here and then bring it over here to this thing. This is where you want your bobbin, but I'm not doing that. So the next place it goes is over here back behind this. And then the arrow takes me down here, down, 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 down. And then there's a little U-shaped arrow. It's hard to see right here. So I go up under this and back up. Now to move this, there's a knob on the side where you can move the little sewing machine arm. See that in there? I want that up. And then I go around the back of that and then back down. Now it's hard to see under here, but there's a little thing to put it behind. Um, I wonder if I can get down there so you guys can really see good. Here we go. Hang on. Boop. So it comes down here and it goes underneath here, then back up on the arm. And then when it comes down here, here's the needle. And then there's a little um, arm right here that the thread gets put behind. So if you can see, so that holds it. If, it does, if it's not in there, it's going to go straight from here to the bottom of the needle and you're not going to have enough tension in your stitch. So you have to make sure it's tucked behind that little thing. And then we're going to go through the eye of the needle from front to back. And that is what I'm going to do here in just a second. Okay, so let me get the needle threaded. Uh, make sure that you have cut the end. If you have like a really uh, frayed end to your thread, it's not gonna go through the needle eye. The eye of the needle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Oh my gosh, this is going to take me the next 30 minutes, isn't it? No. There it went. Okay, so we pull that all the way through. And now I've got my machine threaded through this, behind this, down this little crack, and up under that, then back up and over uh, this arm, and then back down behind the keeper and through uh, the needle from front to back. So this part right here, this little thing, is a presser foot, and there's a there is a um, lever on the back of the, um, the sewing machine here that brings it up and down. If you try to sew with it up, you're also going to have problems. So you have it up so you can stick your uh, fabric in here and then back down to sew. So I have my 
I have my machine threaded. And then remember here we've got our bobbin with our thread in it. So we make sure we've got it to where it's, when we pull it roll, it goes counterclockwise, stick it in our bobbin thing, and then make sure it goes down in that crack and down fed through there, oops, up and under until it clicks. Now it's coming outside. Then I take this part and make sure it's in there completely. Uh-oh, it's not in there completely. Oh no, oh no. There you go, okay. Now we have to get the thread from underneath to up on top. What you need? Uh, oh, thank you. <laughs> Sorry, that was Scott. Everyone say hi, Scott. <laughs> so here's what we do to pull the thread up. I wonder if I can put this down here to show you guys a little bit better. Oh my God, my phone just fell. Please don't crack. Okay. Is that better? I think that might be better. So we can see what's actually going on. So graduate, okay, hang on, hang on. Going back, no problem, even stereo instructions. Aw, oh, Zadel, that would be great if you could be getting horses. Okay. All right, so here we go. To get the thread from down here up to up on top of this, we go to the side where the presser, where the arm is that moves the needle up and down, holding the thread with some tension in it. We go down and pull back up and then pull, oh wait, okay, why isn't it doing it? There it goes. And then it catches the thread from underneath and pulls it. Okay, come on now. Oh my God, it's under my computer. <laughs> Y'all. Okay, and then I'm just gonna clip these threads short because I hate long threads. I'm hot, but I don't want to take my little sweat off. So can you guys see how both of these threads are coming out? You want to make sure the top thread is under the presser foot and the thread coming up from the bobbin is up and both threads are coming through the back. So with the machine set up like this, you are ready to stitch. You are ready to sew something. That is kind of here. Let me go back now. That is kind of the basics of um how to thread the machine. Uh, let, me the, let me turn around so you can see on the side here, uh, there is there are two knobs. This one actually changes uh, for when you do buttonholes, but we're not gonna even worry about that. This is the one that moves your needle up and down. Okay, so got it threaded, got the bobbin, got two threads underneath. Now we're gonna talk about uh patterns so okay hey trash bag fashion lover we're doing sewing machine stuff today um how to use a sewing machine um have you tried making um anything out of trash bags on a sewing machine i don't know if you can sew the plastic on a trash bag or not i have not tried it um god we might be able to try it today i don't have like a trash bag in here hmm. but that would be interesting to try <clears throat> So 30 years since you last used a sewing machine, what? <laughs> All right, well, we need to figure that out, Trash Bag Fashion Lover, because there may be some, I bet like on grocery bags, uh, I'm not sure if it would work, but maybe on like something like a heavy duty bag, it might work. So, okay, what are we going to do? Let's talk briefly about patterns and how to read them. There is all kinds of little teeny tiny writing on the back of a pattern, and you don't need to know all of it. Um, it has absolutely all the information that anyone could possibly need, but all you need to worry about is like your size. So this will tell you, um, it tells you fabrics that are appropriate for each part of the costume. It tells you um, notions and trim. Notions means like the little stuff, thread, zippers, um, appliques that you would put on, lining for something, interfacing, which is something that makes, um, the, that you iron on or sew in to make a fabric more firm and hold up a little bit better. Um, then there's the measurements. So you wanna know if you got the right size. It will, you can measure your body and you can figure out exactly what size you need to cut out on the pattern. Um, and then for each one of the pieces, because there are different pieces in the pattern, um, it shows you exactly how much you need uh, for whichever size, so this is like a chart, so you go to what size you are and you go down 
and you see like, okay, for the cape, I'm for this size, I'm going to need so much fabric, so many yards of fabric of, um, of uh, whatever. So, and you'll see two numbers when it talks about what fabric you need. You'll see 45 and you'll see 60. And those refer to the width of the fabric. 45, fa that's inches. So those are the two standard fabric sizes, how it's laid out on the bolt. Usually they're folded in half and then wrapped around a bolt. And 45 inch fabric is when you unfold it is 45 inches wide. 60 inch fabric when you unfold it is 60 inches wide. It's pretty simple. Um, so obviously if you find 60 inch wide fabric, you're going to need less of it. Um, and the pattern will give you instructions on which, like how much to get for each kind. Like if you have 45 inch fabric, here's how much you need. If you have 60 inch fabric, here's how much you need. So all of that is information on the back and it'll tell you the finished measurements of the entire costume. This is all, side is all in French. So there you, that removes half of it. If you're only looking at the pattern in English, if you want instructions in French, go for it. But if you're only needing the instructions in English, then you've got just this half to work with. Then you find your size, then really you're only working with like one column of information on the back. So the back of a pattern will look extremely intimidating, but um, it's not really as bad as you think. Plus, take your pattern envelope with you. If you have a pattern and you're going to shop for fabric, remove all of the contents of it and take the envelope with you when you go to shop for fabric, trust me, um, unless you write down everything you're gonna need. It's nice to have it because then if you don't find exactly the fabric you're looking for, you can maybe find a substitute because it gives um, several um, ideas. Not every type of fabric is suitable for every project. There are some projects where you can't use a knit fabric. Those are the stretchy fabrics. There are some where you can't use a regular woven fabric. Those are the fabrics that don't stretch. You might need a, a finer silk or a sheer fabric for something in a costume. You might need something heavier like canvas in another part of the costume. But this is the part up here where it will give you a list. And if you can't find what you're looking for at Joanne Fabric or Walmart or wherever you're going to get your fabric, um, then usually the salespeople can help you. Usually the people who are cutting fabric at the fabric store, usually they are crafters and sewers as well. And if you're new, they, I tell you, I remember when I worked at a fabric store, I love it when new people come in. I love it when the beginners come in and they're like, I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm like, girl, come here. We're going to go get you set up. So don't be afraid to ask for help. So that is getting started. Now, once you get all of your stuff, there are different components in the thing. Hang on. Nylon is a cloth that can be sewn into bags. Yes, there are natural fabrics and then there are, I, get, I don't know if we're going to call them artificial fabrics, um, but they're man-made fabrics. Uh, the natural fabrics are things like wool, cotton, linen, silk. These are made from fibers that are occurring naturally in nature. Then there are the man-made fabrics and these started happening, I think rayon was first developed in the 1930s. I want to say, I know nylon was developed in the 1940s or 50s, um, but 40s I think is when nylon was developed. But these were man-made fabrics and they have different um, qualities to them. Um, man-made fabrics tend to be cheaper. They also tend to be um, like, I don't know, like some different ones have different properties. Like cotton is a natural uh, one. It shrinks a lot though. So if you want to make something that doesn't shrink, you might want something like a polyester blend with what you're making. Some people can't stand polyester. That's a man-made fabric. It also doesn't dye very well. The natural fabrics, if you want to dye something, you want to use a natural fabric. The artificial man-made fabrics don't dye as well. So yeah, parachutes, right. Belgian draft horse. Oh, Plantation Carriage Company. The carriage company I work for just got two new Belgians. I need to get pictures of them. One of them has this enormous snoot. I'm dying. I need to get pics of it. Plastic. Actually, acrylic and rayon are made of plastic. Um, and you can get yarns made out of recycled plastic fibers, like plastic bags. Um, Plastic is too thin to sew with a machine. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Soldering iron with a flat tip and just melt it together. That would probably be easier, honestly. Just like melting the edges together. 
Yes, you should come and see the new babies. So when you open up a pattern, this is what you're gonna get. The tissue is your pattern pieces. These and every single side, this is intimidating at first. You open, I'm, I'll open one of these out so we can see how big they are. Um, but these um, can be intimidating, but they have like every size on them and everything that's in the pattern. Some patterns, like to make them, you don't use all the pieces. So let's let's open one of these out, shall we? Oh, and look right here, there's like a toll-free number and there's a website that you can get help if you need it. You can call people or you can find out online. You can email. Okay, so there are several pieces of tissue. But look at this, y'all. It's huge. I'm, and I never, ever get them folded back correctly. So here goes my Wonder Woman pattern. <laughs> okay. So let's unfold this gloriousness. Oh my God, y'all. This, you might need a little bit of room to work. <laughs> okay. So this is actually two pieces of paper. It's big. <laughs> so you can see it, the tissue paper is very, very thin. And you can see the numbers of the sizes on here. So if I was cutting, like I think in these, I would probably for myself cut out a size 20. So I would cut off right there. And I don't even need that end part on there. And then you cut the entire strip out. So the first part of whatever you're making is to cut out all your pattern pieces. So you figure out what size you're working with, what pieces you need, and you cut them all out. Now, how do you know what pieces you need? I'm glad you asked. So here we go. So vinyl fabric to massage tables. Vinyl is another man-made fabric, and it it can be really thick. Vinyl is one that can be used in place of leather. Okay. So besides the back of the pattern, the other part that gets really, really intimidating is the instructions. And the first part of the instruction sheet is pretty crazy. You could, This is another place people will be like, okay, I'm done. I just quit. I can't even. No, not going to. but it's not as bad as you think. I would recommend if you have never made anything from a pattern before, find something simple. Like um, you, simplicity patterns are pretty simple. And if you find one that's easier, like a robe or um, a simple shirt, uh, pants tend to be more complicated. And then of course things like corsets and fun stuff like that um, can be a little more complicated as well. I recommend something fairly easy to start with. So here we go. I'm going to just focus on the top part first. So it will give you the uh, a drawing of what all the pieces are. By the way, if you grew up with Linda Carter's Wonder Woman like I did, give me a shout out. Grinios, I know you were there. Um, but the rest of y'all may not be as familiar. <laughs> a dining table to lay out your pattern. That is a good idea. A lot of times I don't have a dining room table big enough. I just lay it out on the floor. I will make a big area and I will just sit down on the floor and cut out all my pattern pieces. Um, another pro tip, iron your pattern, pe pattern pieces. Um, if you have an ironing board and an iron, put it on the lowest setting, warm. You don't want to burn your paper. But if you iron, because if you notice the pieces, um, there are all these folds from where it was in the uh, envelope. And when you're laying them all out, sometimes the folds can uh, affect the size of the pattern pieces. And you want the pieces you cut to be as accurate as possible. And just a little pro tip there, ironing your pattern pieces before you pin them and cut them out is uh, very beneficial. You'll be glad you did. Trust me. Um, so plus it's kind of fun to iron them. They get all smooth. Okay. So the next page after we're going here, here is the drawing of everything. And then here is where all of the pieces are shown what they look like once you cut them out and lay them out. And then they're all labeled right here, what they are. Um, so like here, we've got bustier front, bustier side, Cape front, cape, you know, cape piece, crown, cape star applique, boot front, boot front trim. So if you take a moment and sort of orient yourself and you can look at all the pieces, 
and uh, figure out what to cut out. So this right here, the next part, oops, so we did this and we did this. Now these two pages here, these two parts of this page, are the sewing instructions. And um, again, they can be, there are some parts of it that you don't need to do to um, lengthen or shorten a piece necessarily. But these are the symbols you'll find on your, your pattern piece, and this is the key to figure out what they are. Um, the grain line. The grain of a fabric is the way the, um, is the way the threads are laying. Like, I'm gonna do this right here. Can, can we see? Like, the grain on this fabric would be either side to side or up and down. Like, you don't want it, this is hard to explain. I don't know if I have a piece of fabric nearby that's really good at showing the grain, but you know how um, a woven piece of fabric has threads going one way and threads going another. Those are the grain of the fabric. Usually fabric will have, it's usually, if you have it, if you're laying your fabric out how it came off the bolt, the grain is usually just straight across. And so the pattern pieces will have a line that looks like this, and that shows you how to put it, because you don't just like slap it on the, the fabric anyway. It matters. <laughs> So that, the grain line shows you how to uh, lay it. It says place this on straight grain of fabric parallel to selvage, S-E-L-V-A-G-E. Selvage is a fancy word for the raw edge of the fabric. That's your edge of your fabric, selvage edge. So the grain line is parallel to the selvage edge. Then there is, there's other things like this means to place it on a fold. Like you might have one piece of fabric, but you place it on a fold so that when you cut it out, it opens out into one big piece. So then there are things for notches. Notches are put in the fabric pieces to show you how to line them up from one piece to another. So like, say there's a sleeve piece and then the front part of a bodice right here, like there's a seam here and then there's a seam down here. There might be a notch on the sleeve piece and a notch on the front piece right here so that you can line them up and you're not gonna have like wonky seams. So, bill of materials, yes. Oh, Marvel, I'm sorry that you're sick. Please get well. Brittany's here, hey. Learning about the phases of the horse's stride of each gate, that's awesome. Brent, you're drinking coffee this late at night? Child, you need to sleep. I'm sorry your head hurts, baby girl. Prickly pear soda with a little vodka sounds really nice. Ah, uh, Brittany, your mare does need a unicorn horn. She is Palomino, she needs like a golden horn. That would be really pretty. Okay, so then again, so these are all your symbols that you need. And in stitching. Okay, da, 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 da. See, our, it already says here, before cutting, press pattern pieces with a warm, dry iron. Circle your cutting layout. That means, here's, I'll, I'll show you the cutting layout. But anyway, that gives you everything you know. So look over those instructions and make sure you understand all of it. So special cutting instructions, there may be a way to cut out the pattern that is not immediately obvious and there will be special directions for cutting it out. Okay, let's see what's next, what's next. Cutting layouts here, this is important to um, the pattern side up, the right side up or down. Oh, pattern printed side up or pattern printed side down. So sometimes you wanna lay a pattern piece face down on the fabric to pin it and cut it out. And sometimes you wanna lay it face up and that will let you know. So. This is the cutting layout. So these are the cutting layouts right here. On every pattern, they will show you um, a visual representation of the fabric you're supposed to buy and how you lay it out. It tells you like the selvage edge here, a fold of fabric down here, and so you lay it out so that it looks exactly like this, and then you cut, Me measure twice, cut once. So make sure you have everything the way it's supposed to be. Here's the bustier bands and the appliques. It shows you exactly how to put the pattern pieces on the fabric so that you are cutting everything out properly. And bracelet, bustier lining. Like here's an example of this one. See where it's shaded? Those are where the pattern pieces are laid face down. And then here's where the pattern pieces are laid face up. I'm trying to go over everything. 
But that's pretty much it. The bottom part of this is all of the layout. So with everything that you've been asked to purchase to finish the costume or whatever you're making, um, you lay it out, you pin it, and you cut it. So, hang on. Yep, and then sewing directions, and it takes you through step by step. Okay, I think that's all we need to do on um, the patterns, actually. Actually. What time is it? Gosh, it's 9.35 already, you guys. I was wanting to sew something. I was going to sew something really quick and easy so we could show how to use the machine. <laughs> so here's what we're going to do. This is why I showed the... Um, the t-shirt in the middle. This one doesn't fit Liam anymore. So he has given this to me um, so that I can cut it out and make a little bag out of it. And I think I'm gonna give it to him when I'm done. Don't tell him. <laughs> if he's listening. <laughs> okay, so I've got my little sewing box right here. This is my box of treasures, not my Mountain Dew. My box of treasures. What's left over in fabric you save for making a quilt? Yes, um, you can save scraps. Yeah, don't turn on the steam heating to do your uh, tissue fabric. Oh yeah, this isn't very different from drafting. No, and as a matter of fact, once you're um, once you get comfortable with using a pattern and using the sewing machine, you can start to draft your own patterns um, depending on your personal measurements. You can slope patterns, which means you drape the fabric over yourself and make markings and then, or on a dressmaker's dummy, excuse me, so you just like lay and pin fabric on there and mark where it needs to be cut and cut it. That's called sloping a pattern. Or you can draft a pattern, which means you're using actual measurements and just doing it flat on a piece of paper. Oh, that's a red done. Oh, okay. Oh, I'm sorry, Britt. Um, I'm going to make a little drawstring bag, Grinios. Um, to make it, uh, why I'm using the t-shirt today. T-shirts are made of jersey knit, which means they're very stretchy. And when you cut them, they don't fray or unravel on the edges. Most fabrics, when you cut them, you have to finish the edges of them because they will, little threads will come off and they will unravel like forever and ever until it's destroyed. So um, let me see. I've got my, here we go. I'm going to take my scissors here and to make a drawstring bag from a t-shirt, first of all, I'm going to cut off, I'm just gonna cut off the whole bottom. Um, and that will be what we end up making the drawstring out of. So can we see this down here? I'm just gonna kind of lay it out. And first of all, I'm going to cut the bottom part off. Just the bottom seam, the bottom hem of the t-shirt. There we go. Okay. So this, you can actually use this as a drawstring if you like. But so we see on the edges of the cut fabric, if I pull it like this, it doesn't have little threads and things that come out. If you take a razor blade to your blue jeans, like if you're, you know, um, uh, cutting up your blue jeans and shredding them and making holes in them and stuff, you make a little cut with a razor blade or a pair of scissors and you'll get all these little threads coming out. That's what happens with woven fabrics. With a uh, jersey knit, like t-shirts are made out of, it doesn't do that. Um, which makes t-shirts, old t-shirts are so fun to make stuff out of because it's just easy. So actually I'm going to cut another strip off of this and that's going to end up being the drawstring of the bag. So I'm lining it up so that it's not like one side up and down on the other two, obviously. Straight edge scissors. Yes, not, not pinking shears. Pinking shears are ones that have the um, zigzag edges. And those are used for um, specific projects. Those help with fraying, but they don't actually eliminate it. Okay, hang on. So for a drawstring, I'm going to cut approximately one inch wide. And I say approximate, I'm not measuring any of this. Do as I say, not as I do kids. Um, if you're working on projects, you will probably want to do some measuring. So for this, I will just cut this part off, like a little seam off. And then I've got a drawstring hee, for my bag. Dun, dun, dun. And if I pull it tightly, it kind of rolls up a little bit and makes it into like, it makes it drawstringy. There we go. So now I've got a drawstring. Hee. 
one part done. Um, yeah, Britt, you should totally post your writing videos on YouTube. I don't know. You have to be careful using songs in your videos, though, because you can get copyright strikes uh, for using other people's songs. Mm -hmm. Yes, document clips are good, but here's actually what I use. I have straight pins. Where are my pins? Where are my pins? You guys, I don't know if this is totally... Do I even have my pins in here? Yes. All of this has gone to Texas and back, so it's a little bit disorganized. Do I have a... I'm just looking to see if I have an empty bobbin so that I can show you guys how to wind the bobbin. If not, I can always empty one. It's just thread, am I right? Okay. Maybe, hang on. Maybe there's one in here. Looking for a an empty bobbin. Yay, I found one, yee! So we can do that. Okay, so what was I doing? Oh, pins. Okay, you guys, these are my straight pins, and they're not like safety pins. Straight pins are straight, and they usually have a little ball on the end. Some of them just have like flat silver um, e edges. I like the little colorful balls because it's really easy to see them, especially if you drop them, and you will drop them. You'll get pins everywhere. So I don't really need to uh, pin the bottom, but I'm gonna show you guys how to pin fabric. So when you're pinning, when you're pinning your pattern pieces to your fabric, or when you're pinning fabric pieces together, you want to go on the very edge and you want to use the ball part on the outer edge and then you push in and then up. So you've got, it's through both layers of fabric like this, and you do it with the ball to the outside so that when you're running it through the machine like this, you're gonna be able to pull the pins out as you go. You don't wanna sew over the pins because if the needle hits one, it's gonna break and everyone's gonna be sad. So hang on a second. I'm actually going to completely cut all of this out. Let me show you, okay, there you go. Where's my thing? I gotta set up my thing. I gotta cut out the squares. So I am leaving the shirt in a double layer like this and I am just cutting up the side of it. It might be a little bit off center, but we're not gonna worry about that right now. Okay. Oops. I'm going to cut up the other side. I don't know if you guys can see. So I'm going to cut up the other side of the shirt. Oop. Cut off the bottom. So over the straight pins, yes, but I have broken, you can sew over the straight pins and usually it works, but I've broken too many needles that way. And it's so frustrating when you're breaking needles over, uh, on your pins. So I just pull them out as I go. Okay, hang on, top part right here. Okay, so I have cut, I cut out pretty much the design of the t-shirt, front and back, and now I have two pieces of fabric. So if it's important to sew right sides together, you'll see that instruction on your patterns. If you sew it wrong side together, if you're just like, if you've got it like this and you stitch it down here, well then the outside of your seam is gonna be on the outside. So you want to put the outsides of your fabric together so that it's kind of inside out. Does that make sense? So here I go. So now I've got the outsides on the inside, and now we pin, yay! Uh-oh, no connection. Did we lose me for a minute? 
Oh, Garland's here. If you do so over them, wear safety glasses. Yes. Hate needles. Yeah, clips. We were talking about that just a few minutes ago is um, uh, using some pins. Uh, why am I having connection problems? Final fabric. It looks like I'm having connection problems. I hope you guys can see and hear me. If you can, um, I am going to pin the edges of this uh, now so I can sew it. Um, I am annoyed that it seems like I have lost. Um, how can you change your profile picture on YouTube? I think there is an edit function um, that you can go to where it says, oh, customize my channel. It's on a, when you go and look at in your, if you're in your creator studio and it'll be customize my channel. So I am placing the pins about an inch to two inches apart. If you put them too close together, uh, it's just going to suck for uh, sewing. And if you put them too far apart, it's, you're, it's not going to be right. You'll get what you want. You want to make sure the edges are together when you're pinning. So you don't want it to end up pinning like, you know, like this, where you've got the edges all wonky. So you're still on air. Oh, good. No glitches here. It keeps like doing a little circle -y thing. Like I'm not getting a connection and I'm annoyed. But as long as you guys can see, that's fine. Okay, hang on. So I'm keeping the edges together. Some people lay them things flat to um, pin. I'll show you guys the pinned edge when I'm done. And we're going to go ahead and sew a seam. <gasps> we're going to sew a thing. Okay. You also want to make sure your edge, especially if you're working with a... Um, Stretchy fabric like I am right now, you want to make sure you don't stretch out one side of your fabric more than the other because when you get to the end of your thing, there'll be like one end hanging way out there on the side. You don't want that. You want the edges to match up. Want them to match up. Okay, so here we go. So here is a pinned seam. So here we go. I have all my pins in it. Both sides are pinned. It's rolling a little bit, but it'll be okay once we get it under the sewing machine. So, all right, hang on. <laughs> I'm gonna put the arm of the uh, this part back on the sewing machine. So here we go. We have got our bobbin threaded. We have got our machine threaded. We have everything correctly done, and we have both of the threads, the top and the bottom, coming out underneath the presser foot and out the back. We are almost ready to sew. It's like 10 minutes long since we done. I'm gonna do this until we get this done though. It's not gonna be too long. Laying it flat helps with larger pieces, yes. Um, with something like, um, with a woven fabric that doesn't stretch, it's a little bit easier to do than with uh, the um, jersey knit. If you're working with old t-shirts and jersey knit, once we do this, make sure that you don't um, excuse me, make sure you don't stretch when you go. Let me see if you guys can see this part better if I put it down here. Oh yeah, this might be better. Okay. So here we go. Let me see if I can do this. So we're putting it underneath the presser foot. These, there's these little scratchy things underneath here. Those are called your feed dogs. And those actually feed the fabric through for you. There are little lines on the side. You see little lines right here. And these for these are for different size seam allowances. Uh, how much did my machine cost? I think my mom bought me this one. But the the model like this is one that you can usually get them for about $100 at Walmart. Um, so I'm going to put, I think this is like three eighths of an inch. So you put your fabric under where you, the needle is going to be right down. And you don't you, you don't put it right on the edge. Let me see. Can you see this? <laughs> so you want to have it over just a little bit. So I'll show you when we're done. Here we go. So once you've got it in place, you'll take on the back and the presser foot goes down. Hold your fabric in place. Don't pull. Hold the back uh, threads taut but don't pull tightly and then your pedal to the machine that's on the ground I'm not even going to show you guys that but there's a pedal on the ground 
where you use your foot to start the needle going and start real slow at first and just do a couple of stitches. Once you've done a couple of stitches, there's a back stitch. My back stitch is right up here. This is my back stitch. It's different on other machines. Sometimes it's a button that you press. Back stitching closes up the edge of your seam and keeps it from going apart. So we're gonna just back stitch a couple stitches, flip back up, and then I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this pin out. So and I have to fight. So here we go. As we're sewing, I want to keep the outer edge on the line that I'm going on. I don't want it to uh, move in and out. Um, here, let me bring my pins over here. Like I said, with Jersey Knit, it can be a little bit difficult. Make sure the bottom edge isn't curling under. Pull that pin out. Keep going, pull this pin out. Doing it slow, if you don't pull your pins out, you can get the seam done faster, but um, it's not gonna be faster if you have to keep changing your needle. So, so I am pulling it through, I'm pulling through just a little bit. I'm not pulling real hard back here, and I'm not pulling this way either. So if you press down really hard with your foot, you can make it go really fast. And if you press down gently, it'll go slowly. Here we go. I'm pressing a little bit. And then go fast. So you can control how fast or slow you go. So now I'm at the end of this, the end of the seam. So I'm going to do the back stitch again. And then up. Now we pull the lever in the back to pull up the presser foot and gently pull it out. Uh-oh, mine's not coming. That means a part of it is still stuck down the machine. The, the, um, the needle is down, so with the thing on the side, the knob on the side, I'm gonna pull it up until the needle's all the way up. Now I can pull it out of there. Doo, doo, doo. There we go. And then we clip the ends of our, of our thing. I hate, see, like here we go. Here's the thread from where we started the seam. I'm gonna clip that too. I hate long threads. So now that we pulled it out, I don't know if you guys can see this, but it's now like it's coming up above. So for the next seam we do, we're gonna have to make sure it goes down through the middle here and back through the bottom of the presser foot again. So let me show you what we just did. So I just did one seam on the side. So here's what it looks like. So when we open it up, I have a sewn seam on the edge here. Why does it look like it's skipping? Look, it's skipping. I might have to adjust my tension. I'm going to tighten up my tension just a little bit, and maybe that'll help me. All right, now I am going to pin the other side of the fabric, and then we can stitch that side up as well. So let me make sure both of my edges line up. So sometimes what I do, if I'm worried about the edges lining up, if I'm working with um, a fabric like the Jersey Knit, I'll pin one edge, then I'll go to the other side and pin the other edge. And then I will kind of find the middle, pin the middle. So now I'm not going too out of whack in one direction or the other. And then I can go back over here and pin this one. And remember it goes, down and up and then we're going to pin some more it goes down and up and then here we go another pin two more and we'll have this done Doo -doo 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 -doo. yeah okay that was quick all i had to do, all i had, now i have my other seam done i have taken my threads and put them underneath the presser foot and towards the back of the machine. Once again, okay, that one got squirrely, so I'm gonna fix it. Then once again, we're gonna line it up with the same seam allowance that we did before with the line on the side of the presser foot. Put the presser foot down using the lever on the back. Pull, I'm gonna go ahead and pull this pin out. <clears throat> Hold the threads taut. Keep, the, um, keep your fabric stable with this hand. And do a few stitches. Back stitch. And now we're ready to sew our seam. 
Pulling out my pen. Ah, what happened? We're gonna have to troubleshoot already. Oh dang it. All right, we already have problems. Something's, oh, look at that. That's ugly. Why are the, why is this happening? I don't know, but here's how we're gonna fix it. I'm just going to leave this here and then sew back over that when we're ready. I'm gonna leave my seam pinned. Okay, so let's look at what we're doing here. Let me pull out any extra threads. Okay, it looks like somehow it became unthreaded. Everything is still threaded correctly except for the thread through the needle. So remember at the beginning I said whenever you troubleshoot, the first thing you do is make sure you are, when something goes wrong, make sure everything is threaded correctly. Oh my God, go through there. Okay. Okay, there we go. I have threaded it. I put it down underneath the presser foot. The bobbin is flowing smoothly, and so um, we're pulling it back out again. Okay, good. Yay. I think we're done. So I'm going to trim this. You know what? I just adjusted the tension. Maybe that made it worse. I'm going to adjust it back. So you don't have to pull out the seam and go over the whole thing if it messes up. Just go back. Make sure, wait, hang on. I want to clip the thread here and make sure I'm not catching this. I don't want to catch this thread in the fresh seam. So here we go. Hang on. Yeah, it'll be hidden on. Uh, did you donate? Uh, wait here. Uh, I'm missing some of this chat, y'all. Rather be kicked by a horse than stuck by a needle. <laughs> yeah, Machine. A lot of times, you know, um, a lot of times, uh, Joanne Fabric, get if you have a fabric store, get on their mailing list if you're interested. A lot of times they will have sales on sewing machines. They will also have coupons that you can use. That's like 50% off um a uh, full price item. So you may be able to get a sewing machine for 50 bucks. Or that's probably about the cheapest I've seen them. Or you can look on Craigslist or um, someplace like that because a lot of times people buy sewing machines thinking they're going to learn to sew and then they get frustrated, they get, um, they don't feel like it, it's, it's in a closet forever and then they're like, forget it, I'm gonna sell it at a yard sale. Okay, so to fix where we were, I'm not gonna go all the way back to the beginning of the stitch, I'm not gonna go to the very end either, I'm probably gonna start right around here. So here we go. I'm going to put it down exactly over where we were. And the same thing as when we're starting a, a seam, I'm holding the threads in the back and pulling the threads to start it. Still going to back stitch. And now let's try this. One of the problems could be I have not changed this needle in a long time. When your sewing needle gets dull, it can pick at the fabric. Out that pin. Trying not to pull out the back. Okay, there we go. And now we're going to do the end here. Remember when we get to the end, back stitch. Just two or three stitches. And then make sure, use your uh, knob to make sure the needle is up and pull and clip. Here we go. So there we go. We even fixed a problem. Look at that. We're so smart. We are so smart. So now what I have is like a tube so that when we open it out, it's got these seams on the side. See, there's a seam and there's a seam, but we need a seam at the bottom. So let's turn it inside out again and we're just going to stitch up the bottom real quick. So I'm going to pin this. I don't need to pin on the edges because it's already sewn on the edges. So I'm looking. Ah, oh, Joanna's here, virtual zookeeper. Hello. All righty. Most people don't probably don't think to donate. Mm -hmm. Okay, hang on. I'm missing y'all's chat. I'm glad y'all are having a good time. <laughs> 
can sew. You know, my grandmother had the she, my grandmother made quilts and she had the most beautiful, even, tiny hand stitches I have ever seen in my entire life. I have been hand sewing for, let's see, um, almost 20 years now. And no, almost 30 years now, y'all, <laughs> um, for almost 30 years now. And I still, I can't do it like my grandmother did. So here, I don't have to stitch over the seam allowance right here. So I'm going to start right about there or a little bit over. So again, put the feed, uh, the feed, uh, uh, press your foot down, pull on the back, pull it taut as you get started, stitch a couple stitches. And then again, Oh my gosh, y'all, I didn't even show you how to adjust whatever stitches you're doing. Over here is your stitches. Oh my God, this was, so if I change, this will be the second stitch, which is a short zigzag stitch. I can change it C, D, and there's all these special stitches here. But um, for stitching my straight stitches, we're just going to stick with A. So doing my straight stitch, doing me a straight stitch. Okay, let's get this going. I'm about to have me a bag. Pulling out the pin. And once I've made it to the other seam, again, back stitch a couple stitches, pull up the presser foot and pull out. We have just stitched together a little bag, y'all. Um, I said the live stream would like end now, but I think I'm gonna, I might continue so we can get the drawstring part in there. So I can show you guys how to do that. Hang on, let me put you back up here for a second. Okay. So now we've got a little bag. Quilts are an art form, they really are. <laughs> Oh, it's relaxing to watch you sew. I wish it was relaxing to sew. When people find out that I know how to sew, they're like, oh my God, you can make me stuff. And I'm like, no. <laughs> I get frustrated with everything. So I'm going to push out the corners. So now I have, I started out with a t-shirt and now I have a Star Wars bag. So what I want to do now is to create a casing at the top for the drawstring, turning it inside out again. A very stretchy bag, yes. Okay. So I've got it inside out, and now what I want to do is I'm going to fold out the seam. So see how I've got the seam here? I fold it out, and then I fold it down. And I'm going to pin that in place about an inch for the casing. And I'll show you guys uh, close up what I'm talking about here in just a second. I'm going to pin this. Pinning often takes like the most time. So see how I've opened out the seam on the middle and then folded it over. So I'm just gonna pin that like that all the way around. First, I'm gonna go, let me do the other side. So again, here, I've got the seam. If we're looking at it like this, here's the side, but I open it out and then I can open out each side of the seam and then fold it down about, I'm, about an inch. If you really want to, um, if you're really working on precision, if you're working on something that's not just a t-shirt bag, you're going to want to use um, one of these. This is um, a hem gauge, and this, it's got, it's up to about six inches, and you can move this part of it along as much. So if I wanted to do a one inch casing, I would move the little thing to where it's at the one, see that, and then, I put it, so um, when I am going in the middle here, I could just fold it over. But if I wanna make sure it's correct, I put that in there and make sure the edge goes all the way to there and then I pin. And this just gives you a little bit of more of um, an exact measurement so that your, uh, your seams and your casings are not all wonky. You don't want wonky seams and casings. So if you're confused right now and you're like, what are you even doing? It will be apparent in just a second. A lot of things with sewing are extremely confusing 
when you're only halfway through them, it's like, I don't understand why this looks like this. This doesn't look like anything what it's supposed to look like. I'm confused and upset, uh, but don't panic. <laughs> don't panic, it should be okay. So I'm not gonna actually measure the other part of it. I'm just gonna sew it. So. I keep losing my connection in the chat. Yeah, it does feel backwards a lot, Garland. Um, yeah, it feels, I'm like, sometimes I'm looking, when I was first learning how to sew, I would be putting things together and I'm like, this does not make any sense. And there, there have been times where I would do an instruction the way I thought it was done. And then when I look at it afterwards, I'm like, oh, this is not how it was supposed to happen. And I was wrong and I have to redo it, but that is okay. So now we have a seam that goes all the way around the top of the bag. So you can choose to start or stop anywhere. I'm going to make the opening for the drawstring in the back of the bag. Here is the front of the bag and this is the back of the bag. So I'm going to start about the middle. And oh, here's where, see if I'm doing this, this part right here is a little bit too wide. Actually, it's not too wide. I can fit it over there fine. But if it feels too wide, you can remove this part like we had it removed in the very beginning. So I'm going to start kind of in the middle here, a little bit over the edge of the middle. And I want to go not to the edge here again. Let me see if I can get you guys down close again. <laughs> yes, learning how to do anything. There is just a big learning curve. So here, when we're doing this, we don't want to sew the uh, seam on the very edge. We want to sew it towards the edge of the fabric itself. Um, so I'm going to move it over where I can see the needle is very close to the edge of the fabric. And then I'm going to put that presser foot down, make sure I've got both of my threads in my hand, hold them taut and start. And again, back stitch. There we go. I'm going to pull that out. Now with this, I may have a little bit more trouble moving it. So, so I'm trying to stay right on the edge of this fabric right here. Try not to pull too much from the back end. Okay, now, I don't know if you guys can see this, but the edge of the fabric is starting to roll up in between the points of the presser foot here. So I'm going to lift it up while the needle's still in the fabric. Lift it up and put it back down to make sure it stays flat. Okay. Pulling out some things here. Going over the seam where the fabric is a little bit thicker. Uh-oh, it feels like it's... Uh-oh, uh -oh, I lost a pin. Y'all, I'm a mess right now. Pulling them pins out. Okay, hang on. Ugh. Oh, it's getting caught underneath the edge. I do need to pull this out. I'm a nerd. As an equestrian, I am horrified. Okay. Okay. This makes it a little bit easier. I'm sewing over where my pins came out. I'm hoping this is okay. <laughs> Pulling my pins out. Okay. Here we go. Have I ever worked in canvas? Yes. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I have it. I, when the needle is down in the fabric now, I'm going to pull it up and push this part back out because it got a little bit up underneath presser feet. Canvas is um, heavier to work with, which makes it easier in some ways, but it also makes it more difficult. Okay, I'm coming back to the end. This is where I started. Now, because this is going to be a drawstring, I do not want to go completely back to where I started. I want to leave about an inch uh, to half an inch of an opening here so that I can feed uh, the drawstring through. So I'm gonna stop at this pin and backstitch. Boom. 
foot up, needle up. Okay. Okay. I'm clipping my threads. We are just about done with our thing, y'all. Okay. I'm clipping all of my threads. Oh my gosh. And I was pulling a little bit on the fabric and you can see that it's not a completely straight stitch. And that's what happens when you're kind of pulling on Jersey knit fabric as you're sewing. So now we see what that's like. <laughs> so good. Actually, I did that on purpose so you all could learn. <laughs> okay. Now we are going to turn our bag right side out. Now we've got a little bag. I kind of cut off Darth Vader's head at the top, but you know what? He deserves it. Okay, now I need, do I even have a safety pin? Oh no, I need a safety pin. Hmm. To thread, one of the techniques to thread um, your drawstring through, hang on, I'm going to look for a, I'm pretty sure I have a, oh yeah, I see one, I see one, wait. A safety pin, a really small one, but. And where did my drawstring go? Oh, it's on the floor. <laughs> I'm gonna pick it up with my foot. Okay. So we've got our drawstring here, and to thread it through, okay. hand stitch denim patches on a horse blanket. Wow. Blanket was a hand me down. Holy Swiss cheese, I bet. Okay, so to uh, run the uh, drawstring through, you're going to take your um, safety pin and put it through the end like this. So it's just like a safety pin on the end of the thing. And this is what you're going to put through. If you try to just do the fabric through the fabric, you're going to have a hard time. You're going to hate everything. You're going to be like, why do people even sew? I don't understand. So here we go. And we put it up. Remember the hole that we had that we left right here? We feed it in, and now we're going to just pull, feed it through, and pull, feed it through, and pull, feed it through, and pull, feed it through. Oh, yeah, my tension is terrible. Look, I've got like gaps in the things. Thank goodness this is just a quick little <laughs> tutorial, and this is not something. I don't know if this is because I was pulling on it or if my machine tension needs to be worked somehow. Maybe I was going too fast. Um, again, if it's something that needs that precise um, seam, you might want to rip the seam out and start over again if you have a problem like that with a project you're working on. So, all right. Gotta make it through the seam where it's been like this. Sometimes you have to work it through a little bit to get it through all the way. Uh oh, come on. There we go. Got it through. Back through. Back through. Good. I want it through here. Almost done, almost there, y'all. Da, 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 da. Then you can take your safety pin off. And now you have a drawstring bag. Yay! Okay. So you have a drawstring bag that you can use for stuff. Eee! Okay, before I end the uh, sewing machine tutorial, I want to show you guys how to uh, thread a bobbin on a machine because it's a little bit different. And centaurs lay in a hammock. I wonder if centaurs would need a special kind of hammock because hammocks would be pretty cool. Okay, so to wind a bobbin, you are going to unthread your entire machine. So just unthread it all. Then it's going to go through this thing on the top. And then it goes around this thing. You haven't used this before. Oh my gosh. So I wrap it around there and bring it back over here. That's what that does. Then, what did I just drop? Oh, that's my glasses. Nice. That's good, Michelle. That's good. So there's a little hole in the bobbin. See that right in the middle there? So here's what you're going to do. You're going to, from the inside, 
to the outside, you feed the thread through that hole. From the inside to the outside, feed it through the hole. Then you put it on this right here and you click it over, move it over to the winding position. And there's like a little diagram on the top for all of this. And when you lock it in place over here, what that does is disengage the sewing arm. So this is not going to be going up and down the whole time when you're doing this, because you're going to use your foot on the, uh, the footy thing. Hold the thread up and out of the way um, and then go. Now after about this far, I'm going to pull off the extra. And it just winds itself. It's witchcraft, oh my gosh. So then to get it off, get off my, get off. Oh my God, there's thread all over me. So to get it off, you click the bobbin back in the other place into uh, the, the sewing position, pull it off, and then you have a bobbin full of thread. Boop. Now you've got this that you're gonna put in your little thingy down here for the bottom. So now you have to redo the sewing machine. So remember, it goes through the top, then over here to this other thing up top. Most of these are just guides, then down through here, back up, then back up and over this, then down. And then remember, now here's where you're going to put it behind the little guide on the needle. The first billion times you do this, it's going to be confusing and horrible. But once you get used to threading your machine, it becomes second nature. And you get to know even the feel of it. Like when you do a stitch, you can feel when it's wrong. Oh my God, I am too old to see this thing. Okay, So there we go again. And our bobbin thread is already up through, so we just make sure it's underneath into the back. And there we go. So that is our Sewing 101 tutorial today for our crafting live stream. We have gone over how to thread a sewing machine, how to wind a bobbin, how to put the bobbin in the machine, how to do a straight stitch. Now, I did not finish the edges of this bag, but if you're doing something where you need the edges um, of seams finished, um, what you're going to do is before you even sew the pieces, you're going to take the pieces individually one layer and go around all of the edges with a zigzag stitch. The zigzag stitch going around all of your pattern piece edges is going to keep it from fraying. Now, because I use Jersey Knit, I didn't have to do that because Jersey Knit does not fray. And that's why I love it so much. But so there we go. I hope you guys enjoyed it. We also went over reading a pattern, cutting out the pattern pieces, decoding the instructions. Um, if you need help, you can call a friend who knows something about it. You can message me on Instagram or Facebook and maybe I can help you figure it out. You can, um, there are even, we noticed today that there's a website and there's a 1-800 number to call on the pattern itself if you need help with your pattern and you can get help from the people who actually made the pattern. But I am going to give this to Liam since he gave me the shirt to use for my tutorial. So thank you everybody who showed up today for my sewing machine tutorial. If you're watching this on the playback, thank you so much. I do live streams every Tuesday night. Sometimes it's like nine o'clock, sometimes it's like 10 o'clock. So um, subscribe to the channel so that you will know when they are coming up, but it's every Tuesday night. Next week, we're going to have Adriana back again, drinking wine and cleaning our tack. I'm not sure what the topic is going to be, next week, but um, tune in for that. So that is it. We didn't go too much over, did we? Let's see. Um, yes, thank you, Garland, for being here. Thank you, Zadel. Zadel, I'm telling you, you need to learn how to sew on a sewing machine. After Farrier School, though, you are busy right now. Um, and thank you, Grinius. You need to get back to it, too. You're a very creative person. And um, yes, Joanna Taylor was here. I know Marvel's already in bed, but I'm so glad that you showed up. All my people, trash bag fashion lovers showed up again tonight. I've got to make a trash bag thing for her. And Brittany, yes, my dear Brittany, with your new horse, um, you need to do that too. All right, I think that's it for the chat tonight. You guys, thank you so much, and I will see you again uh, next Tuesday night. Good night, sleep tight, and don't let the bed bugs bite.